talk reality TV, pop culture, and hot topics. Today we are going to be talking about two reality TV shows on Bravo, Summer House and Vanderpump Rules. We are also going to be talking about a couple of podcasts, um, The Vial Files. Um, we talk a little bit of ja- about Jackson Brittany's podcast. We're going to talk about Kristen Doty's podcast. Um, and then we're going to talk about the two episodes, um, the Summer House finale and the uh, reunion part one of Vanderpump Rules. Just a quick reminder that this is everything I've compiled and watching the episodes and listening to a couple of podcasts. This is all my opinion. And uh, let's also remember that this reality TV is just for fun. Let's not take things too serious. Let's have some fun. All right, let's get into it. We're going to start off by talking about the Summer House finale um, because Vanderpump Rules, um, you know, it was a big, big episode. It was the reunion. And then also I have a couple of podcasts to talk about. So we're going to talk about that after the Summer House um, finale. So this was an interesting episode. It was mostly just the last party. That was mostly what the episode was. Um and we um, get Carl and Lindsay coming back, and then we have Danielle and Lindsay's little fight, conversation, whatever you want to call it, and then at the end of the episode is just, um, you know, the end of the party, which I thought was kind of interesting because I feel like, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like in the last um, finales um, of seasons before, the, um, the very end of the episode was always like them saying goodbye to each other, And then, like, leaving the summer house and, like, getting back and the summer's over, all that. Um, So I thought this one was a little interesting. And when I watched it back, I was like, wait, does it just end at the the last, you know, at the end of the party? So um, let's start from the beginning. The episode starts with Carl and Lindsay getting back to the house after leaving. You know, they had Robert talk to Carl. Um, Carl and Lindsay ended up leaving and then, um, you know, everyone was kind of like annoyed with that. And then they came back for the final, for the final, um, party. And I'm wondering if this is their last season. I'm also wondering were producers, did they make them come back or not make them, but you know, were they asking them to come back? Would they have come back? Would they have not come back if it was their choice? Those are just a couple of things I was wondering. Um, Carl and Lindsay and Kyle chat. Lindsay said um, that Carl's mental health was the most important and that Carl wanted to leave, so she wanted to support him and leave as well. Kyle says that he thinks that it kind of made it a snowball effect and it kind of, you know, put a bad taste in everyone's wa- mouth. Um, and he told Lindsay he should t- she should talk to Danielle as soon as possible. Um, Danielle says at the end of the day she wants to figure it out and um, she's hopeful, which is interesting because... She kind of came in a little hot in that conversation. I'm jumping a little forward, but in that conversation that they had, she w- she came in a little hot. So sh- um, for her to say that she's hopeful is a little interesting to me. And I know Lindsay came off a little harsh and motionless. So, yeah. Um, and then they have their welcome to the jungle party. Um, Danielle to some, you know, this is at the party now. Danielle says to some friends um, that she feels weird about today and that the ball is in Carl and Lindsay's court. Um, she said Carl didn't want to um, come back to a negative environment. Danielle says if that's how he felt feels about me, um, he doesn't know me at all. Which again is interesting because she was negative this summer about them. So I mean, what he was he supposed to say, think that she's being positive? And I know I'm not like a total like Lindsay and Carl support like ride or die. I just think that it's interesting how Danielle has been acting. And I think that she's projecting a lot of like her insecurities on her relationship onto Carl and Lindsay. And I do understand that, you know, Lindsay, she has been, you know, a little, probably lo- like a little neglectful of her, of her and Danielle's friendship. And that happens, you know, when, when your friends get into relationships and you feel like they kind of ditched you, like that's a horrible feeling. So I do sympathize with Danielle, but I just think that she should have just said how she felt instead of, talking to everyone in the house and saying all these things and getting mad when Carl says he wants to propose and all of these things. Again, just my opinion. Yeah. Craig then talks to Amanda about Paige and living together in the engagement. She kind of gives what has worked for her and um, Kyle. It shows Oliver talking to a woman. I mean, you can hear Maya yelling his name um, and asks 
if he's mic'd up and um, he says, yes, she says, I can't talk to you right now then. The whole thing with Maya and Oliver this episode was so, so bizarre to me. I'm, they, personally, I don't think that they, they seemed like a couple at all this whole summer. We never saw him sleeping over. We never, and maybe it was because there's too many people in the house. I totally get that. But we also never saw them like kissing or hugging or acting like a couple at all. And then all of a sudden she's like, I don't know. It was just weird. All of a sudden she's mad. And, and, and why is she trying to hide it from the cameras? It's like, you know, you're mic'd up. You know that they know what's going on. Why are you trying to hide it from them? And she does it multiple times. We then see Maya talking to some friends um, that are not on the show and she's saying, can you believe Oliver's here? And that, oh, there's a camera on us. So, you know, don't say anything. Uh, which again, weird. She, It's like she doesn't, like she's not talking to people from the actual house, but she's talking to her other friends, but then she still doesn't want the camera on them. I'm like, did some, I mean, maybe we'll find out at the reunion, but it seems like maybe something else happened or I don't know, or maybe this has been going on. Something strange. Lindsay is now talking to a friend. Um, her friend says that she doesn't want to talk to Danielle because she doesn't want them to talk about Lindsay and um, she doesn't want to talk to her and snap snap at Danielle about Lindsay. Lindsay says Carl was a wreck on the way over here and the friend asks if Lindsay's talked to Danielle. Lindsay said no. Maybe she realized Lindsay kind of trails off. Her friend picks up and says um, that she's about to get her ass handed to her, which is interesting because that made it seem like Lindsay was going to come in hot as well. But you see later that she doesn't really come in that hot. She's pretty like stone faced. Paige and Craig have a talk. Um, Craig wants to start the process of marriage and kids. And Paige says we don't have to rush because she knows what she that she wants to be with him. So we don't need to rush. And this whole season, I thought, wow, Paige seems really annoyed with Craig. And like, are they going to make it? And then this was the first conversation. Where I was like, okay, she does really like want to be with him and, you know, want to eventually get married. And maybe she's just scared about moving or she's scared about him moving. So I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens in the future with them. I still am not not sure, too sure, but this did seem like a very healthy conversation. That the only healthy conversation I've seen between them two this season. Okay, so we are back in the kitchen with Danielle and Lindsay and a couple of friends. They pop open a bottle of champagne and they um, do a little toast. Danielle says that she wanted. This is how she wanted to celebrate Lindsay. Lindsay says, um, last weekend was the perfect time. And Danielle says, I only found out 30 minutes before. Lindsay says, Carl didn't want to ruin the surprise. Danielle claims that because Danielle questioned how fast they were moving that, um, that they cut her out. Lindsay thinks Danielle, um, doesn't want to be happy for her. Danielle says she's always been there for Lindsay. Lindsay said Danielle's never liked Carl and Lindsay together. Danielle says she would have done anything for her. Lindsay comes off very emotionless, like I said. Um, they both said that they were that they're done. Lindsay says she's not invited to the wedding, and Danielle um, runs um, to the other la- uh, to the other ladies, and they rally around her. Again, like I said earlier, this conversation was a little strange to me. It, nothing got resolved, and it didn't even seem like anything productive was said or anything like that. It was a very strange conversation, and maybe. Um, emotions were just running too high. Danielle was too upset. Lindsay was too, you know, emotionless. And uh, maybe we'll get like a a better talk from the reunion. I also do think that a lot of the people in the house this season were always trying to get Lindsay to react. And when they didn't, when Lindsay didn't give them the reaction that they wanted, they kind of like didn't know what to do with that and like then got more mad. I didn't see any like no productive conversations happened this summer. It was a, such a weird season. Normally, I'm so into Summer House. I'm like, this is the best show ever. Super into it. Love watching it. This season feels weird to me, and I don't like it. And I don't like... Th- the girls seem mean, and I don't know. It was just a very, very strange season to me. It made me it made me kind of sad. Okay, Lindsay goes outside. Um, him, Her and Carl are talking. Um, Lindsay tells Carl what happened. Kyle comes over, Lindsay leaves, Carl says he doesn't know where to go from here, blah, blah, blah. In the next scene, Lindsay, Sierra, and Paige are talking about Danielle and, um, and Danielle and Lindsay, when Maya abruptly gets up, she says she, she's going to go get water or something, um, 
and Maya, she takes, um, she takes Oliver to the bathroom. She asks Oliver to cover his mic. Um, Oliver says he's here for her. Maya says she saw him talking to other girls. Um, why did you cheat on me? So it seems evident that he cheated on her. Um, he says that he's sorry. Um, and she eventually tells him to leave. Okay, I thought this was so weird. Why are we not talking about it on camera? What is Maya so afraid of? Like, she's mad. She gets mad at, um, like, Lindsay and Carl about their relationship and stuff. But then she doesn't want to show her relationship. So I just don't understand where she's coming from. And I hope we get some answers at the reunion because it seemed very, very strange. Okay, the episode comes to an end. They all jump in the pl- pool, blah, 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 all that. Um, I didn't talk about Gabby or Sam or Corey at all this episode. It seemed like they weren't really in it. Um, I do love Gabby so much. I hope she comes back. Sam and Corey, they seem like they're super into each other. I guess we'll see. I'm sure they'll come back. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, and then Chris also, uh, he, I thought he brought, brought a good energy to the summer house, you know, from a newbie that we haven't seen before. You know, a lot of the newbies can be kind of boring, but I really liked all the newbies this season. Sam was a little iffy for me. I mean, I, she, I don't know. I kind of, I liked her, I guess. My favorite was definitely Gabby, and I hope that we see her again next um, season, or at least maybe on Winter House or something. She might thrive in the Winter House. We'll see. Okay, so that is it for Summer House. We're going to get into Vanderpump Rules now. Before we um, get into the Vanderpump Rules episode, I did want to talk about a couple of podcasts that I listened to this week. Um, we have Charlie Burnett. Um, on bio files and then we also had um, when reality hits with Jackson Brittany um, and Kristen was on that we're going to talk about a little couple of things on that just a couple and then we had to call her daddy um, with Ariana which was a couple of like bombshells on that I would say um, we also have love sex and what else matters with Kristen Doty we had Janet Elizabeth and Jared Lips on there they said a couple of things that were kind of inter- interesting so let's get into that we're going to start with Charlie on a vial files. Um, all right. So she said a couple interesting things. Um, she couldn't show up this season because she was having some mental health struggles. I think that's why we didn't see her a lot. You know, she wasn't at the, um, something about her finale party. Um, she's known Raquel since pageant days, which I thought was interesting. I didn't know that she knew her that long. Um, Charlie thinks that Raquel hasn't grown from the, um, competing with other women. Um, you know, in pageants, you're always competing with other women. Charlie doesn't think that she's grown out of that. Charlie thinks that she never um, grew out of the seeking validation from others. She says that she got that from the pageant, um, the pageant world, and she's never grown out of that. She's always seeking validation from others. Um, She says that they also got into a fight that wasn't shown. Um, She thought she was being weird. She said it was after the Sir um, eat tasting, you know, when um, Raquel came in and she was like an hour or something late and then Lisa was super mad. She said after that, she confronted Raquel and was like, why are you being so weird? Um, she thought that she was just getting a big head, um, you know, from the show and the clout and all that. Um, but she says, looking back, it was just she was so distracted with um, Sandoval. Um, Charlie thinks people like Tom and Ariana liked, liked them so much was because of Ariana. Um, you know, no one would have liked Tom so much. Um, but they did love them so much because Ariana was such a cool person. Um, someone came to Charlie, um, and said that she saw Raquel and Tom at the Abbey. She said this was a different time from when Allie saw them. Um, she said that her hairdresser told her, um, first season that someone had to sign an NDA to fuck Tom Sandoval. (laughs) That was her first season. I think that was season eight. She said, um, she knows them all filming together makes good TV. So she wants, you know, she's thinking everyone needs to film together. It's going to be really good TV. You know, I know people were, um, or like the castmates were saying that they didn't want to film with Raquel and Tom. Um, but she's saying that's, what's going to make, make it good. Um, Nick pressed her about, um, what she thinks the big revelation is at the reunion. Um, she said that she thinks maybe more people knew or maybe, more people were involved. People weren't being truthful how the situation panned out. She's worried more things will come out that it's going to hurt other people's feelings, including her own. Um, Charlie said that Raquel's part apartment was fake and that she's renting it from someone. F- so I guess like fake for filming, which I heard that a lot of people do that, which I'm not sure, but, um, 
kind of interesting because Nick Viles, one of the girls on his show, um, I think she's a producer or something. Um, she lives in the same apartment complex as Raquel. So very interesting that that is fake for filming. I was wondering, I was like, how is she fil- um, affording this apartment? It's like pretty nice, but I guess it's fake. So that makes sense. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to talk about when reality hits with Jackson and Brittany, um, and then Kristen Doty was on this podcast. She said a couple of things um, about, like, Joe um, Schwartz's, like, roommate or whatever that I want to get into. Um, Kristen said that Joe Schwartz, Schwartz's live-in girlfriend roommate group texted a big, long text with Sandoval and Ariana and Raquel all together in it and, um, and said, this is so hard for me because I love you all equally, um, and that... Joe doesn't know what to do now. I can't believe she group texted them. That's insane. She, Kristen also said that they talked about that um, that text when she was on Vanderpump Rules on the on the finale with Ariana, but it didn't get shown. Um, Jack says Joe is thirsty. He said he's met her twice. Um, no one knows if Ariana knew about the ski trip, which you know they again t- they talk about that uh, the reunion a little bit. Um, they also said a funny story about Brit, um, about Brittany was going to an event with Raquel. Raquel, Raquel kept changing the locations where Brittany was going to pick her up in the Uber and it ended up being at, um, Schwartz's and Raquel and Sandoval got into the Uber and Brittany didn't even know Sandoval was um, going to come. So that was kind of a little funny story. Um, they also talk about that in Kristen Doty's podcast too. So we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. We're going to get into, um, call her daddy with Ariana right now. So a couple of bombshell things that Ariana had said on call her daddy. Um, you know, she talks a lot about that night that, um, she found out about this. Um, and then she, you know, tells the story all about all of that leading up to filming and everything. Um, but some of the main things that she said that I was so shocked by, um, she said she thinks that, um, um, they had sex while Ariana was upstairs. She thinks Raquel and Tom were having sex downstairs while she was sleeping upstairs. Um, she said he also would leave the bed um, that they went to bed together in at the same time. He would leave and go sleep with Raquel in the guest room. I don't know how she found that out or anything. Maybe she just thinks that happened. I don't know. It seems like that would be would be pretty devastating. Um. She also said that um, Raquel was in the hotel room during Tom and Tom's Watch What Happens Live where Tom Schwartz was acting so, so weird. And she thinks he was acting so, so weird was because Raquel was in in the hotel room. She says she knows for a fact that she was in the hotel room waiting for them to get back, which, oh my God, that's so weird. Um, He would also use people's credit cards to pay for things like... um, like, um, flights and he would Venmo them back so that it wouldn't get back to him. And she says use people's cards. And it's like, I'm wondering if that's, was he using Schwartz's card and he was Venmoing Schwartz? I don't know. That is so shady. Um, in regards to her new man, she says that she's just having fun and enjoying herself. Um, and she doesn't answer the question if they're together in a situation ship or friends with benefits or anything. So I think she's just enjoying herself, which that's amazing. Um, a lot of the other things that she said in the um, in that podcast um, also came out in the reunion. So we'll talk about, you know, a little bit more of that stuff when we get into the episode. Um, the last thing podcast we're going to talk about is Kristen Doty's podcast. Um, they talk a little bit again about um, that event that Brittany um, that Brittany went to with Raquel where she had to pick up everyone. I guess Sheena asked Brittany, oh, can you pick up Raquel? Um, and Adam said, oh, just text her. And I guess she, Raquel texted Brittany and was like super like blunt and was like, um, we'll be taking these people. Like, make sure you get an Uber XL. Here's the address. And it, I guess it ended up being Schwartz's address. And Sandoval was there, too, like I said before. Um, they also said, oh, Schwartz might go and Joe might go, too, which I thought was weird. And then the other only other thing that they talked about was that Raquel sent a postcard to Sandoval to Ariana's house that had lightning bolts on it and <laughs> in the state that she's in. And, um, she said, um, something like, I saw this and thought of you talking about Sandoval, which is like, oh my gosh, you're really going to send that to Ariana's house. Like she's so like, I'm just wondering where like her common sense is, if I'm being honest, like, doesn't she know that like 
Ariana's not going to be, like, happy about that. Like, maybe put it in, like, an envelope or something. Like, don't just have a postcard sent to their house. Anyway, so that is it on the um, podcast this week. And then we're just going to get into the reunion part one right now. Okay, let's do it. All right, so this is Vanderpump Rules reunion part one. I'm going to be recapping the Peacock uncensored, uncensored and extended version. All right, the episode starts with the day before Ariana, Tom, and Raquel are the ones, um, are doing their one-on-ones with Andy. Um, Andy asks Tom and Ariana a couple questions. Um, Raquel says that she's expecting the worst and hoping for the best. What is the best that she's hoping for? I'm really honestly wondering. I wish he would have asked her because what's, does she like think that, oh, they're just gonna be like, you know what, Raquel, it's fine, totally fine. Like, don't worry about it, girl. Like, you and Tom seem really happy. Like, we love that for you. Like, what's the best that she's hoping for? Like, she should be expecting the worst and nothing else. Like, she should just be mentally prepared for the worst, everyone coming after her. For her to even think anything else is insane to me. Um, Ariana says Raquel said that she's um, sorry. I don't know what to say. That was her... Um, her I'm sorry text to Ariana. Ariana said like shut the fuck up and blocked her or something like that. Um, Tom says he got to really know Raquel. First stuck, first hooked up with her day after the Mondrian. Um, they had sex that night. Ariana really didn't expect anything. Um, Tom says that they hooked up and didn't for a long time and then started back up during um, Life is Beautiful, which was after filming, I think shortly after filming. I think that festival was in like late September. Um, Ariana says that she can't imagine doing this to one of her girlfriends and she kind of says like men are trash. And so she, you know, she's expecting, you know, men to do this, but she's not expecting her girlfriend to do this. Tom says that he and Ariana put on a front for filming and I'm wondering why now, why is he saying that all of a sudden after 10 years of filming with her, um, he's now saying they put on a front, but he never admitted to that before. Very, very strange. All right, we're back in the studio with everyone. Raquel's in the trailer 100 yards away. Um, Tom tries to apologize to everyone. Everyone yells at him. Ariana says Tom um, victim blamed her. Um, Andy asks Lala if she thinks it's healthy. Ariana and Tom are still living together. Lala answers and says um, Tom is just like Randall. Um, She explains that when um, when Randall cheated on Lala, she said... Um, before this happened, she could never get him home and then she could never get him to leave after this. Ariana agrees with Lala and saying that that's the same with her, that she could never get Tom at home. But as soon as this happened and she wanted to get away from him, he, she could not get him out of the house. Lisa kind of jumps in, gets mad, says that's a ridiculous thing to say. Um, James and Tom kind of start getting into a riff, um, And I find this interesting because Tom distances himself from James's friendship. And it reminds me a lot of how Jax acted after him and Kristen got caught saying um, that him and Tom weren't that good of friends. And then also, I don't know if it was when this, if this was in this episode of the reunion or if this was on the Call Her Daddy episode, but Sheena was on the phone with them and Tom is saying to Sheena, you know, we're not that good of friends and all of this stuff. And why do they do that? They distance themselves. It's like they don't want to feel bad. Like, oh, we weren't really that good of friends. It reminds me so much of Jax. Um, James gets out of his chair. and he has to split them up. Um, you know, they're all kind of yelling at each other. This is, it's a little bit hard to follow because they're all speaking at once. So they're kind of just all yelling at each other. Lala tells Tom to stop talking about the past. They keep panning to Raquel in her trailer. She's smiling you know, a lot, or, like, rolling her eyes, or having no emotion to this at all, which is a whole different topic. Um, Tom says he wanted to tell Ariana after filming and after interviews, um, he said he didn't want her defending Tom and Raquel at the reunion, but I'm like, you guys let her defend you guys the rest of the season, what's the difference? So I don't really believe him, I do think he was trying to break up with her, but I don't think he would have ever told her about Raquel I think that they would have just started dating a couple months later and they would have made something up about that Andy asked Tom about the timeline um 
he admits he, uh, that he knew in August, even though Sandoval said January on him and Andy's one-on-one. Schwartz admits that he was talking about talking about Sandoval when he said he had a feeling Raquel liked someone else, which is just so gross. Come on, Schwartz. I can't believe he's even admitting to this. I mean, I'm glad he's telling the truth, but kind of gross. Um, Schwartz said Sandoval, Sandoval told him about one night stand and that went back to normal. And then, um, you know, fall leading up to the new year, they spent way too much time together. Sandoval says Schwartz was, um, not the decoy and that he really thought like Raquel was a great girl and wanted Schwartz to get like his mojo back or whatever Tom Sandoval says. Lala says that, um, Tom is acting how he acted about Ariana when he was with Kristen um, Ariana agrees. Ariana remembers asking why he didn't break up with Kristen and he would make up things like her grandpa died, um, or blah, blah, blah. We had tickets, blah, blah, blah. Kristen on her podcast actually confirmed her grandpa didn't even die then. So I don't know if that's just a full on other lie that Tom was telling. It's pretty, um, clear that he's a very good liar. So, um, Ariana confirms that she did know about Miami girl and that they, um, were new in their relationship, but didn't want she didn't want people to see the worst in Sandoval. She thought she was going to be spending her whole life with this man, so she wanted everyone to see the best in him. Um, they talk about Tom and Katie's relationship a little bit. Katie said that she needed to choose herself, and Tom was um, neglectful of them. Katie said it's, it's just something that she wanted with no relations in the friend group. Talking about the friend group thing, Tom says it's not fair because she was seeing someone while still living, while they were still living together, which, sorry, Tom, but that doesn't, that those two things are not the same. She asked you, please don't hook up with anyone in their filming friend group. I think that's a pretty easy ask. I mean, come on. There's like one single person in your guys' friend group. You could just don't make out with her. Just don't hook up with her. It's not that hard. Tom says it was a double standard. Again, I don't agree with him. I'm so sorry, Tom. Ariana says um, that Tom planted the seed with Raquel at Coachella. Um, they show a never before seen at Ariana's house with Sheena the day of the finale. Sheena tells Ariana that Raquel told a mutual friend that Sandoval told Raquel that him and Ariana were open. And this was the weekend of Coachella of April 2022, months before this whole August Montreal boys night, guys night, whatever thing happened with him and Raquel. So he, you know, was planting the seed months and months and months before. And I know people were also thinking, wondering, did, were, was this their whole like affair happening before um, they broke up with, she broke up with James and that, that this is the reason she broke up with James. I guess we'll find out. I really, I don't know. I just don't, I, they, their breakup did come out of nowhere, but for some reason I just don't think that's the case. Um, Sandoval denies this, obviously, that he never said that to Raquel, and he says Raquel never said that either, which I'm like, how do you know? That's a weird thing to say, that she never said that. It's like he's trying to protect her. It's so weird. Um, They ask about sh- um, Schwartz and Joe. Schwartz says Joe was never, they were never in a relationship, but they were just like in a situationship, friends with benefits kind of thing. Um, Schwartz tells Katie she'll get a cease and desist if she keeps talking about Joe in the comments, which I'm just like, why are you saying that to her? Like, are you Joe's lawyer? Like, relax. Um, Schwartz denies ever going on a double date with Sandoval, Raquel, him, and Joe, even though we saw pictures of them at Big Bear and other pictures of them. We saw them, like, going to a Kyle Chan thing. So I'm just like, come on. What is this, like, you're going to say no when we've seen pictures of you? Like, sorry, you guys are all four together. Therefore, that's a double date. Like, you can't just be like, well, it wasn't a double date because we didn't do this or, like, whatever. It's just like, come on. I hate when he does this. Um, Sandoval says he um, hasn't given money back to his mom, but he says that she's fine and he will pay her back regardless if it's the bar or whatever. He says that he wouldn't take the money from her if it wasn't if she wasn't going to be a fine. Schwartz says that it wasn't the bar that he neglected Katie. He couldn't t- prioritize Katie be- out of necessity, which is hilarious because... Come on. Lisa says, I've opened how many bars and restaurants and I've never neglected my relationship. So you can't really use that as an excuse. Um, Katie and Ariana made about 200 k in merch for their something about her. And Tom and Tom were feeling real bad about themselves then. They were looking like they were having a pity party. Um, Andy asks Sheena about regretting pushing Raquel to make out with shorts. Sheena says, yes, she got a different... Um, 
story from Raquel um, and wishes that she had even more empathy for Katie. And, you know, I wish that Sheena would just have come to this before the all the Tom and Raquel stuff came out. Because it's like, what she did was shitty. And I wish that she could just say, yeah, what I did was shitty. I shouldn't have done that. I didn't have any empathy for you. I've been through a divorce. I know what it's like. Why couldn't she have said that? But it's just like, oh, now Raquel's the bad person. So now I'm going to apologize to Katie. It's like, you should have apologized to her regardless. And she, Sheena's just so blindly loyal to people. I wish she would, you know not do that. Katie feels a path forward for them, but she thinks, you know, she's blindly loyal to people, just like I just said. And I agree with her. They get into another screaming fight. Um, James leaves said again. And the episode is over. We did it. We finished part one. I'm so excited to see what happens next week. Um, I think... I think the episode's going to probably be like half and half or maybe at the very end Raquel will come out. I think we still get some Sheena, some Sheena time um, and then we will get into Raquel. I'm so excited to hear what Raquel has to say. I have no idea how she like could explain herself or anything like is it, I don't think it's going to be good. Like we thought this episode was bad with Lala and James. I can't even imagine how they're going to tear her apart. All right. Well, that is it for this week. I will talk to you guys next week. Um, and we will talk about, we will talk about the summer house reunion. We will talk about Vanderpump Rules reunion part two. Um, we might talk about a little bit about selling sunset, maybe some Kardashians. I'll watch that. We'll see what, um, if there's anything juicy to talk about there. I did finish selling sunset. I didn't have time to talk about it today. Um, but maybe next week we'll get into it. All right guys. Have a great week.